Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. Um, we're not gonna dive right into a game today. Um, as, I don't know, like, my rating has been doing poorly recently. I don't remember exactly, like, whether we went up or down in the last video, uh, but, you know, I remember there was once a time we were in the top 50, and I'm, you know, currently having trouble staying in the top 100. I don't think that necessarily means that I'm getting worse. I think I just was on a really lucky win streak that got me as high as I did. Um... But it has made me sort of think about uh, improving, right? How how to improve. And so I'm going to start today's video with some discussion that is not strictly related only to Prismata, um, but rather how to improve at anything. Um, I've, I've never given a, a, you might call it a lecture, uh, like this before, but I'm gonna, gonna take my best crack at it. So, there's a thing that you may or may not have heard of, uh, called deliberate practice, which is a technique used by, um, people who are serious about improving at things. Not all such people, but many. Um, and... Prismata is the kind of game that attracts people who want to improve. There are plenty of casual Prismata players, and in fact, most of the time that I play Prismata, I'm pretty casual about it. Like, you can, if you look at my match history, like, I'm, I play the casual bots a lot. Just, like, sort of fly through some games pretty quick. Um, you know, this one lasted four minutes, this one lasted three minutes. Um, it takes a lot longer when I play on camera because I have to describe my turns and I have to wait for humans and so on, but the um, and, and so I'm playing less casually when I'm on camera, typically. But a lot of Prismata players play, like, they're serious about it. They want to be a good player. They're competitive. Um, and so one way to improve is just, like, play a lot of games, right? You'll get more experience, and the decisions will come to you somewhat more easily because you've seen the situation before, and there's a lot to be said for that. That's good. Like, if you play once a week... You know you're gonna have a tough time improving no matter how like what what you do so you need to be playing some baseline amount just to to improve uh, at all um there's other ways you could improve you could you know study you can talk to other players these are all great things and i'm not going to get too much into them um but if you just like play a bunch of games and hope to improve eventually you reach sort of a plateau where you're not like really learning anything new you're just sort of grinding out what you've already been doing and if there are things you've been doing wrong which there are since like i don't know if you guys have seen the leaderboard but up at number one it's it's n sven right why isn't it a malloy it's because he's better than i am right so there must be things i'm doing wrong that he's not um and of course n sven does plenty of things wrong as well but um so the point is there's definitely there are things you are doing wrong and if you just play many games you'll reinforce bad habits rather than learn new ones so, back to deliberate practice. Um, this is a term that I, I has been around for a long time, but I first heard about it when I was... There was a brief time in my life when I was sort of interested in, in getting to be good at StarCraft II. Um, and I, it never really worked out. Like, I, I made it to Gold League once, I think. Um, maybe I, like, made it to Diamond and then lost... Or Platinum, whatever's above Gold, and then immediately lost a game and never made it back out. I don't remember exactly. Point is, I wasn't actually that good at StarCraft 2. Um, but at the time, I watched some Day 9 videos, and he had one that covered this, this thing of deliberate practice. And I found it a really eye-opening way to think about how to get better at things more than just, like, doing them and hoping for the best. Um, and the idea is that try to get good at a thing is too broad of a goal, right? If I sit down and say, I want to be a better Prismata player. I'm just going to play my games, but be better at it. Um, that's not really very directional. It's not very actionable, right? There's not much I can do to measure my progress, to to tell how well I'm doing at that, to move myself in the right direction, other than just like play games and hope I n notice and improve on things. But the idea is that you do this once you have sort of reached a place where it's hard to improve by just like sort of playing. Uh, and so the idea behind deliberate practice is to break down 
the thing you want to improve at into very small pieces. Find, and you know, I'm not a teacher, like I'm probably butchering this concept of deliberate practice, but this is how it has come into my understanding as a thing that I understand and can apply. So I'm gonna explain it to you guys that way. Feel free to read more about it to get it actually right. But the idea is break things down into very, very small pieces. Find something that went wrong in a game that you played that you think you could do better. Um, let's let's look, in fact. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> I lost two games in a row to the casual bots, which is pretty embarrassing. But uh, I don't I don't want to go back and like look at these games to specifically find a thing I did wrong. I already have some things in mind. Um, but but something some skill you think you could get better at. Not like a specific thing you did wrong, but a skill that you are not using as well as you could. And have that skill in mind when you sit down to play a session, say 20 minutes or, or whatever. A couple, several games so you can practice this over and over. And the idea is that you need to give yourself feedback on how that is going. Um, you, you play, let's say, I have in mind as my, my I, the thing I want to practice this session for this first deliberate practice video is planning ahead, right? I'd like to be better at thinking what I will do next turn. Um, so uh, my idea is to make that more concrete, very like a small thing is I would like to, before I end my turn, have a specific plan for what items I plan to buy next turn. I don't care if it's a good plan. I just want to have a plan. I would like it to be a legal plan. That would be ideal. But you know, as long as I have a set of units I'm planning to buy next turn, and some reason I thought that was a good idea, um, that's enough. And so, my goal is to just get better at that one thing by practicing it until it sort of becomes a little bit more natural and I don't have to focus so hard on it. And then you can move on and find some other part of your game that you'd like to improve. Say, um, choosing the correct economy size on turn one, let's say. You might practice that by, on turn one, before you pass your turn, estimate how many drones you want to end the game with, plus or minus two. Or how many drones before you, like, stop droning, plus or minus two, say. Um, and then you can practice that until it becomes something you can do without thinking too hard about it. And, you, and as you continue, all these little holes in your game will gradually go away, and you'll, you'll become a better player by inches um, by improving all of these small pieces. So an important part of this process is actually paying attention and tracking it, right? It's, the hard part is staying focused and giving yourself feedback as to whether what you are doing is good. Um, so to that end, I've made myself a little tiny spreadsheet here um, where what I'm gonna do is every turn, I'm gonna write down what I planned to do for that turn. And then, so say it's turn four, I'm gonna write down um, what I planned to do for turn five and what I actually did for turn four. And then I'll pass my turn. And then on turn five, I'll write down what I actually do on turn five and what I plan to do on turn six. Um, and at the end of the game, I'll come back and look at this and say, ah, you know, I planned TTD on turn four. Um, actually, that would be more of a plan, turn three plan, right? Uh, but what I actually did was 1D, because Blood Phage was in the set, and I, you know, whatever, decided to build a Blood Phage. And then I'll, I'll write down here why I think I made this mistake. Or whether it was, you know, not, not a mistake, necessarily. Just like, remember my goal here is just to make a legal plan. That's all I'd like to do. Um, if there's some turn where I forgot to make a plan at all, or I made, you know, whatever. I'll write down an explanation for any discrepancies here, and when that game's done, I'll make a new little thing, say, I don't know, below it, and start writing some stuff down for the next game. And at the end of the session, uh, or, you know, the day's practice or whatever, 
you can look over these and see is there anything in common, reasons, your mistakes you're making over and over. Try to focus on those, and if you need to, start a whole new deliberate practice session about a specific mistake in why it is that you don't plan your turn. Right? Um, so it's going to be a lot slower than just playing normal Prismata. Um, how do I... Here we go. And so I'm actually going to play against Masterbot um, with no time controls. And just try to do this for a game to show you guys what I'm thinking about. And then what I mean by this deliberate practice stuff. And we'll see if it helps uh, me see if this is something that I have trouble with, whether I'm doing it okay already or, or what. So let's dive into a Masterbot game here. And uh, I won't make you guys look at the spreadsheet during the game because I couldn't figure out a good way to get a, a reasonably sized piece of it on the screen at once. So I'll just uh, write in it. Uh, off camera, and then uh, after the game we'll go review it. So remember, hmm, something I forgot to cover while we were still looking at the rating, is that in a competitive game, especially one with a visible rating, it's very easy to let yourself be rewarded or punished by whether your rating is going up or down, right? Um, if you're practicing and practicing and you're scoring worse and worse, you're going to feel bad. Um, which is why deliberate practice is careful to say, set a specific goal for yourself and focus on that. And don't worry about the other stuff. If, if you're practicing right, you should lose a lot. Um, and your rating will go down or I'll start losing the master bot or whatever. Um, but you will gradually improve in that one area and then if you decided to go back to playing without practicing you'll just start doing better because this new skill that you learn can be applied so anyway we're not going to worry too much about whether we beat master bot whether i even picked the right strategy here just about whether my turns are coherent all that said i still do want to plan like what my, i'm not going to go with just one turn at a time i'm going to try to do how i normally play a game but with a plan specifically for next turn as my main goal. So what's this set all about? You could try some kind of breach-proof stuff with Tantalum, Gauss Fab, and uh, Militia. It's interesting. Um, doesn't seem super promising. Like, how big is the biggest absorber? Just wall. So you can't get a super high econ. And uh, Gauss Fab is kind of a big econ unit, right? It's it produces six gold and a green every turn, and then makes you spend that on Gauss Cannon. And it's like a gigantic super drone, right? So you, you would be inclined maybe not to get this, unless you're going Breach Proof, and then maybe you could. Yeah, certainly the only time you're getting Gauss Fabricators here is if you plan to go Breach Proof. Um, what other lines are there? You could go for like, Winter. I don't know. Um, Ferret and Sack helps with that. I believe, because you can like get the second blue without having to commit to two Blast Forges necessarily. Um, other things are basically like, well, there's not any great attackers in this set, except Tantalum Ray, I guess. You could, well, okay, and Winsor. You could try a Reservoir thing and say, I'm going to just use Cauterizer for Soak. Reservoir is my, my attack. I'll try to last long enough that I can kill you with force fields. Um, I don't think that's very promising. So the main ideas, I think, are either Winsor or, like, Breach Proof with Militia. Uh, also, note Cauterizer and Galvani syn synergize pretty well. Or at least reasonably well. It's a source of engineers. Um... And I think I'm going to just try Breach Proof. I don't know. Like, I have a suspicion that Winsor is going to be better. But... <laughs> I mean, the Breach Proof line is just sort of easier to play, I think. And I kind of have this feeling that Breach Proof is good against Winsor because Winsor is all about pressure and Breach Proof doesn't care about pressure. So I don't know. I think this line might kind of lose to Tarsiers, basically. 
tar sears and cauterizer to soak and i guess ferret and sack for more walls or something but uh, i'm gonna give it a try so there you go turn one pretty natural now we say what am i doing on turn two well i think i'm gonna build two drones and a conduit right that seems pretty normal here into like two more drones and another conduit or if we wanted to really rush out the gauss fab we could get two more conduits and a drone on turn three but i don't need to plan ahead to turn three exactly i just i've written down my plan for turn two let's move on and uh figuring out when to sneak in a galvani drone is going to be kind of interesting here i think um because it should help with at some point you kind of want to stop droning i don't know you'd love to keep droning forever in a in a venge cannon kind of thing but um you kind of can't and so maybe you could throw in one or two galvanis uh okay so we're building dc and what are we doing next turn well i said another conduit but maybe that's not right maybe you want to build your green a little bit less quickly so that you can get this blue stuff or maybe you just don't bother with the militias I don't know. I think it'll be nice to have access to wall for a little while to take pressure off you while you build up drones and green. So I think I will get blue involved. My plan for next turn is DDB. Oh, whoops. Uh, my actual turn was DDC. My plan for next turn is DDB. And then we'll kind of get a wall or a militia and then we'll get a wall and a militia probably and I'm not sure about the order yet. Depends on what the opponent does. Um, and throw in some more conduits so we can start getting these guys. Oh, I'm not going Venges! Oh my god. I, I just saw all this breach-proof stuff and was thinking like, oh yeah, sure, breach-proof. But drones aren't breach-proof. Uh, and there's no way to get rid of your drones here. So maybe this whole breach-proof plan is silly. Maybe it's just... Maybe you do have to go for Windsor. And you can spend your spare green on Tantalums. The problem with Windsor is like, what are you going to do with all the Tarsiers you're building, right? Maybe you just don't build Tarsiers, you build like Cauterizers. Because if you assume Windsor is the right plan, then it means the opponent is also building Windsor, and you'd prefer not to have Tarsiers in that universe. So I'd like to actually try to spend my red on Cauterizers. Okay. Cauterizers and Ferret and Sacks to build, like, Militia as a slightly more breach-proof sp splitter. Or maybe just splitter as, like, something you can hold back to defend with. I think this whole breach-proof idea was just silly. So I think I'm going to try to go for Windsor. Yeah, and the number of drones that we want for that is like 15-ish. Um, yeah, that sounds about right, 15 drones. So two more turns of droning is my guess. Um, I think I will actually build an Animus next turn, not a Blast Sword, so I'm gonna go actually change my plan to DA next turn so that I can get like a couple Ferret and Sacks. Maybe don't even get a Blast Forge? Is that crazy? Because I don't want to build, like, a Tarsier and a Ferret and Sack. I don't want any Tarsiers for when I get breached. Maybe I'm just focusing too hard on, on this idea of not building Tarsiers, but I'd like to try it. So that's that's my plan. I'm going to build DA. I'm going to keep droning a bit, and I'll build some Ferret and Sacks to help me get a Wincer. The problem with this, I think, is that the opponent can easily get the first Wincer if they want. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! I forgot. Um, I have Galvani's. I could consider it building one here. And I think I should, because I'm not going to want to build a lot of drones on any of these upcoming turns. So I'm going to go ahead and build that Galvani and put a DA1 in as my actual turn. I knew that DA would be cutting a drone, and I forgot that I could make up for it with Galvani drone. So there's something to work on, I guess.
Oh, I didn't even write down a prediction for next turn. Okay, well, so we'll write, we'll, we'll mark that down. My plan for turn four was NA. Didn't do anything. All right. I can see I've got a lot of improving to do. Uh, what am I going to actually do for turn four now that I'm here? Uh, my plan was like a couple fair in sacks. I had, I had decided that much. So, okay. How much did I actually decide? I had decided on like 1, 1, D something. So, fine. And I was thinking about a Blast Forge. Um... You could get a Tantalum Ray, I guess? Oh, not 1-1-D, one, one but what is this, 7-7-D? Okay, so 7-7-D plus a bunch of question marks. That was my plan. What I'm actually doing is 7-7-D... Tantalum Ray doesn't feel great, but it picks off a Galvani. Makes him build a wall. I guess that's fine. And we're up to, what, 13 drones now? Maybe 14 if you count the Galvani, which you shouldn't. So we're getting close to the number of drones I said I wanted. I could even get a Reservoir here? God, I didn't plan my next turn either. Jeez, this is hard. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, that's good. That's why we're practicing it. So I could build a Reservoir here. It does not really fit with my plan at all. I'm not going to have a big pile of green. I'm not going to be lacking attack. I have way too much pressure on my drones from the Winter, so I think that Reservoir is not the answer. I'm just like not sure what to do with my red if I want to commit to not being breached. Or if I should give up on that and build Tarsiers. I could build more sacks and just treat this as like really slow blue. I guess. I can build like a Winter next turn and then like start getting Cauterizers or something. Or just militias. I don't know. Um, and we're getting a drone here for sure. I guess. I kind of want another conduit, honestly, for more tantalums. I'm having trouble spending all my money because these ferret sacks are super, super cheap, but I don't have any other tech. Also, this Tantalum Ray sucks because he has a wall and no more Galvanis. I don't know. It's not the end of the world, but... It doesn't feel great. So maybe I'll just build, like, some more Engineers to let me keep droning. I could build a Blast Forge, but I already have too much blue from all these Ferret Insects, right? Um... Eleven. I mean, eighteen is like Cauterizer Tantalum. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just throw in like two more engineers so I can get more drones because I'll kind of need them if I'm spending them on Winter, and I want to still buy like Cauterizer and stuff. Okay, so I guess this is what I'll do this turn. Meanwhile, uh, let's write down a plan for next turn. Next turn I'm buying the Winter. That's easy. So eight. And this leaves me, I have what? 20 bucks next turn, because I will be clicking all this stuff. Um, so that leaves me with 11 bucks. I'll get another ferret and sack, leaves me 10, and three drones. Seems a little bit out there, but uh, sure. Let's, let's say that's a plan, so. Uh, eight is the Winsor. Seven is Ferret and Sack. That's ten and three drones. And my actual turn here was E E seven 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 D C. 
Okay. So now I have a plan for uh, turn six as well, even if it's not a great one. This is going to be even slower than the first game that was on the channel, I suspect. Okay, so the enemy's gotten a militia. This is something I should have thought about, is what attackers is he building. Masterbot is not very good about spending his tech, but I should at least assume he'll eventually start spending some tech. Um, and so I could have considered building a wall, but against militia, and especially while holding a Galvani drone, you usually don't want to. So this is fine. Um... And look, he's building another Galvani for me to pick off. Great. So, next turn... I will have... I don't know whether he'll pick off an Engineer or, or a Galvani. He should get the Engineer, but Masterbot, it's hard to say. So let's, let's assume I might have as little as $19, because I'm only popping one ferret in sack. If I want to build a cauterizer, um, that leaves me with eight bucks and just green. So I guess a Tantalum Ray and a Galvani is a good purchase. So one, two, six is the plan for next turn. I might like a wall, but I don't think he's going to have that much attack that I actually want to defend against. So I think one, two, six is fine. It's right justifying this one because it looks like a number. Whatever. Um, I could consider saving my green to get a Gauss Fab, but I think that that's just not the right idea. There's no real justification for a Gauss Fab here when you could be building attack. Uh, on the other hand, the Tantalum Ray next turn doesn't do anything. Yeah, it does, because I'll have a Cauterizer, so it'll be doing actual damage. Okay, uh, fine. So I'll write down my actual turn here as 7, 8, DDD, which is indeed what uh, we planned, so that's nice. I can't build more Galvani's, right? Right, okay. All right, he picked off the Galvani, fine. So that means we're doing exactly what we planned, and uh, I will click the Tantalum Ray here. I didn't say that, but I was planning it since I'll be over the Absorb Barrier. Um, great, and that's a nice easy turn. We'll, uh, we'll mark that one down. But now what am I doing next turn, right? I'm gonna have... Yeah, I don't wanna build a wall. It, it just gives him like too much militia value. It's, you know, here it's... Great, he gets to kill engineers. He's happier about that than about getting $2, but this way I at least get some attack. Whereas if I just let him, if I build a wall, I don't get my attack in, and like that kind of sucks. So, next turn I will have at least 18, perhaps as much as $20. Um, I would like Cauterizer Tantalum Ray again, I think, right? That's 18. And I should have 19, so I'll get a Galvani as well. That's 1, 2, 6. Same turn as this turn. Um, although, actually, might I want a wall? I probably will want a wall, right? Because he'll have built some more attack. Eh... Then he'll just snipe the Galvani, right? I want to protect my engineers. They're getting important with the cauterizer and everything. So let's not do 126 next turn. Let's do something that involves a wall. Ugh. I just like I have all this red and I don't want. The opponent looks like he's finally getting a Winter. I feel like I don't want Tarsiers. Maybe this is the whole wrong idea. Maybe. Tarsiers are great with Winter. Um, they do apply more damage cheaply, but they're vulnerable to an enemy Winter, so I don't know. Should I be worried about that? Maybe, maybe not, but I'm sort of like committed to it now, I feel like. 
Um, so if I build a wall, that's five of my 19 bucks. I'll have 14 left. And I have to spend some red, and there's no really clear way to do that. Maybe just rhinos? They're not great, but they'll be coming in as the winter arrives. Yeah, rhinos next turn are probably good, right? So, like, wall, rhino, rhino. Will I have any energy left to... I'll have one energy. So, wall, rhino, rhino, drone? Drone doesn't feel right. Okay, we'll, we'll try it though. Wall, Rhino, Rhino, Drone. That's my plan for turn eight. Clicking tantalums again. I guess I could cut one Rhino to get another Ferret and Sack, so I can continue this kind of... whatever it is I'm doing with Cauterizers. I don't know. It doesn't seem that great. I already have one lying around. I shouldn't work too hard on getting another. All right, so this turn does look indeed pretty good. On the other hand, he has all Militias, but I don't want to give him three Engineers for free. Now, clicking Militias is not that great for him. All right, so Wall, Rhino, Rhino, Drone. That's my actual turn eight. And it puts a serious amount of pressure on him with the Winsor as well. Like, that's Masterbot for you. He didn't see this coming, I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, shit, I didn't plan this turn at all. Okay, well, we'll write down some question marks for this turn. Uh, okay, I was just so excited about the Winsor, you know? Um, I'd like a Cauterizer. And the Tantalum Ring. That seems pretty good, right? I suppose I could get a Gauss Fab instead, but that's not that's not the kind of game this is. <laughs> tantalum Ray is better. So Tantalum Ray, Cauterizer, sure, why not? And I can afford one Galvani and still uh, be buying stuff. First thing I'm noticing is too much green. Shouldn't have built the second conduit. Like, I'm not really able to fit in all, enough Tantalum Rays, but okay, whatever. That's not what we're practicing this game. Fine. So that's this turn. Um, which is what? Uh, one, two, six, basically? Yeah. So what are we planning for next turn? Turn 10. Honestly, so far ahead that it doesn't matter anymore, right? He has no drones, he has no attack. Uh, his Reservoir, he just blew all his green right before it went off. Um, so... Maybe like... Rhino, Ferret and Sack... Tantalum? How much is that? That's uh, 5, 6, 13... And I'll have 15. I could maybe throw in one Galvani. Okay. R seven two one. Seems like an okay plan. I won't be able to throw in a Galvani. I won't have any energy when, when I'm harvesting this and clicking all the cauterizers. So forget that one. R72 is the plan next turn. Maybe maybe get an engineer as well. I might need to replace some of these guys to keep the cauterizers firing. Uh, yeah, and I did indeed write down my, my plan turn. Okay, cool.
And by making my Tantalum Rays so vulnerable, I have sort of made myself Breach vulnerable, and so maybe this whole Tarsier Avoidance plan didn't work out. Um, but they're less vulnerable, and they were doing a lot more than Tarsiers would be, so maybe it's not so bad. Uh, and I think my plan still looks fine, although, I, well, let's, let's put it on the table and look at it. I, I do, in fact, need the Engineer, because I'm losing... I'm losing one here, and I don't want to have just eight. Well, he might target down the Galvani, but, you know, whatever. That's fine if he wants to do that. It's best, I think, for him to kill an Engineer if I don't rebuild it. Right, if I do this, he definitely kills an Engineer, turning off the Galvani. So I might as well build one. And if he targets the Galvani instead of the Engineer, that's that's fine with me, too. So I like this uh, as the actual turn. R72E. And what are we doing next turn? Well, next turn, the Winter will be arriving, so I'd like to apply as much pressure as I can. Which looks like... Two more Rhinos. And probably an Engineer is the best I can do. RRE. Um, will I be able to buy... He might let me get a Galvani, but I'm not going to count on it. If, if we end up getting to add one, great. But I'm not making that part of the plan, since I think it would be a mistake for him to do that. He gives up. So, but fine. Let's let's see what this last turn would have looked like. Is RRE a good plan? Um, RR is good, but actually I'm losing... Uh, no, he's probably... He's only attacking for three, not four. This force field is dead. So I am losing an Engineer. And he targeted the Galvani, so actually RR1E is better. And I'm not going to play out the rest of the game. We've we've won here. But... So we, we clearly learned that I have a ways to go in uh, correctly, or in, in, in planning my next turn, right? Even with all the time in the world at my disposal, I can't stay focused on it. And it's an important skill to have. You know, if you guys remember the, the Why Did I Lose with Silene Undulata talking to me, um, she basically has the point of view that you should always have your next three turns planned out. Like, at least a rough idea of what you're doing. Um, and I usually don't. So that's a way that I aim to improve. And we saw today that, uh, that I definitely have not mastered it, as I predicted. So let's see if we can find out why that is. Uh, I'm not sure what the best way is to like show you guys this spreadsheet and also look over the game. Maybe I'll just we'll look at the spreadsheet and um, where there's a question mark problem, we'll we'll go back and look at the game. So turn two, yep, looks good. I planned this conduit thing. Uh, turn three, I threw in a Galvani that I didn't realize I could have built. Forgot. Galvani was in the set. Um, I also kind of reconsidered my whole plan, didn't I? Um, because of... <laughs> I realized Venge isn't in the set. So, that's sort of what happened here. Uh, overall, not too bad in terms of what I was trying to do. I was trying to come up with a legal plan for next turn, and a, a specific legal plan, not just like build some attackers, but like here are the attackers I plan to build. In this case, the economy and tech I plan to build. Um, so, uh, we'll, we'll write here mistake. Um, we have a new mistake column. Because this, this was not a mistake, it was like, yeah, it, Clearly, it was a mistake, but it wasn't the kind of mistake we're measuring in this session. Whereas here... Oh, come on. Can you just, like, make that a little narrower so this all fits on screen? Um, here's a mistake that I made where I did not plan my next turn, which is what I wanted to do. Um, wait, was my actual turn really seven, just 7-7-D on turn 4? 
I need like hotkeys for switching between these two. I didn't plan this out very well. Ah, no, I built a, uh, uh, a tantalum as well. So my, I, I just forgot to write it down. So that was 77D2. Uh, why did this happen? Why did I forget to plan a turn out at all, besides like having some vague idea of building not Tarsiers? Um, I think... It's useful to write down why so that... Um... Here you go. So that when you're looking over these later, say at the end of the session or something, um, you can try to spot, like, what are some common patterns that, that occur to you. And so, like, why exactly did I not plan this turn? I was thinking about something else, right? But what was it? Um, I kind of got, got caught up in how to never build Tarsiers. Right? That, that was sort of what was on my mind was just like, is there something I can do in this game where I don't build Tarsiers? And it made me forget to plan my next turn. Okay. Uh, how about turn five? What happened? Why did I not have a plan for turn five? I think the answer is pretty clear. Flustered by forgetting to plan uh, my turn four. So... A mistake on the previous turn got me flustered, and I was just like, so... Okay, fine, I fixed my problem, let's move on. Um, so I was, in, I was in a hurry to move past what I perceived as, as a problem, a mistake that I had made. Um, and I, I let a previous mistake cause another mistake. Fine. These next several turns went quite well. Um, well, not these. But these turns went well. I planned what to do, and then I actually did the thing. Great. Uh, why on turn 9... Why on turn 8, rather, did I not plan my turn 9? Uh, one minute, I'll get you guys uh, this. So, I, whatever. I can't... I know I can assign keyboard shortcuts, but I'm not going to try to do that in the middle of a video. So, um... Here we are. It's turn eight, and I've just got some stuff and I'm committing it. Why have I not planned a turn nine? Um, I think the answer is that I was excited about Winter going off and like imagining, wow, I'm gonna do so much damage to my opponent, right? Look at these Rhinos hitting and these Gauss charges. That's amazing. Um, I was also thinking a bit about whether I needed to replace an engineer, and I was like, oh, no, I don't. Let's move on. Right? But that wasn't the only thing I was supposed to think about, so that was an incorrect response. So we made a mistake on this turn. Excited about Winter firing. Um, distracted by... What I say, engineer count? It wasn't exactly engineer count so much as, like, what my opponent might do, remember? Um, I was thinking about whether he would click his militias, whether he would click my Galvani. And I eventually was like, okay, I figured out the answer. He should do X. He should, you know, kill my engineer. Um, maybe. Or, or that it's not clear. But at any rate, I... Once I reached a conclusion to the thing I was thinking about, his militias and my defenders, I was just, okay, let's move on. And I didn't stop to say, wait, I should make a plan for next turn. So, distracted by imagining opponent's turn. Fine. And the next two turns were fine. Um, here, the plan was slightly different from what we did, but that was not a mistake. That was just opponent made a bad play, against which the plan was wrong. So, that's not a mistake. So, here we have a very simple 
11 turn game that I played against Masterbot, which took me over half an hour to play and analyze. And I just had one thing in mind that I wanted to try to do as well as I could, and I made three mistakes, right? Even while trying to model for you guys how to be good, right? So this is great, right? Um, I would rate this game as uh, below expectations. I did not accomplish the goal that I set out to accomplish. Um, as you can see, I had these three mistakes, but I've identified some things that could could be recurring themes in why I fail to do this in my games. And so in the next game that I practice this on, I can probably like not try to reincorporate any of this feedback directly. It's all sort of vague enough that it's not clear whether any one of these are a recurring problem or what the more broad problem is. But when I see the mistakes that I make in my next game, if I see some common themes between them, I can maybe take something away and say, okay, well here, I get too excited by, um, or maybe I tend to get distracted by planning my opponent's turn and forget to plan my own. And so I can try to work on specifically that, right? I don't know, maybe that's too specific. But, but in practicing planning my own turns, I can try to remind myself, it's fine to think about your opponent's turn, but yours is the one that counts. So you can see why I didn't do this on ladder. I just, there's not enough time. Um, I think this is valuable, a valuable way to practice, and it's a lot of work uh, compared to just banging out games. Um, but with time, you get better at the thing you were trying to practice, and it becomes natural enough that you can do it under time pressure. And like maybe in some future uh, session, I might have the plan of try to plan my turns while under time pressure as the thing I'm practicing, for example. Um, but for now, I just want to worry about like being able to plan a turn. So I think this, this is the only game we're going to play this episode. There's clearly not time for another. I'm not sure how many more episodes like this I'm going to do. It's probably not that much fun to watch, and it is a lot of work to record. Uh, but I do think it was helpful to do at least one of them, so that you guys have some ideas for focused practice yourself. Um, if you are trying to improve and you feel like you're sort of just stuck in a rut doing stuff and hoping it works. Um, what you want to improve will be different from what I'm trying to improve. Planning your next turn is a great plan. Um, a great thing to work on, but depending on your level and what's bothering you, you might have other things in mind. For example, um, you might have, I talked about planning your economy size, that's something I would want to practice. Uh, you might have the goal of spending all your red and blue every turn, right? That would be useful. You don't always, strictly speaking, want to spend it every turn, but you know, if, if, you, if there's some turn where not spending it was correct, and also getting yourself into the position where you couldn't spend it was correct, you know, that's fine. That doesn't count as a mistake. But just never... You might have the goal of don't float resources accidentally, uh, where the accident could be building too much tech to begin with, or just not spending the tech that you have. Um, and then you can... Feel free to float tech on purpose, say, when you're building Antima or something. I don't know. Um, you know, you, you might just have in mind... Uh, what else? Oh, right, something I thought of was, like, finding granularity exploits. That might be something you could practice. Um, either from the point of view of making sure you always exploit your opponent when possible, or making sure you don't leave your opponent a way to exploit you. Um, uh, stuff like that. Choosing a reasonable first attacker. A re picking the right colors of tech to build. I don't know. Um, there's all kinds of things you could practice. Uh, and if you do, I'd be interested to hear about it, actually. Um, how, how it goes, what you practiced. Feel free to say so in the comments. 
But at this point, I'm sort of just pontificating. Um, I don't think I'll do another one of these right away, but if I get lots of positive feedback on this video, uh, and there's people asking for more, then sure, we can do some more. But we are done for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.